I'm not sure why I waited till last for this brand. We've been talking about <laughs> soil fertility and some different nutrients and things uh, really throughout the fall, and we haven't talked about soil pH well, yet. Well, the reason why we waited till last is basically... Oh, there's a reason yeah, behind this? basically we forgot, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The, well, one of the main reasons why we needed to wait until the end is it needs to be fresh in your mind that you need to get out there and soil test, and when you soil test, the very first thing you've got to take a look at on that test is soil pH. It has the most impact on everything you do on your farm. Sure, I'm, NP and K are really important. So is testing micronutrients, cation exchange capacity, sulfur, things like that. All super important, don't get us wrong. But soil pH is number one on your list. That's what needs to get fixed first. Well, when we start by looking at soil pH, we're concerned about is that soil towards the acid side? Is it towards the alkaline side? Or is it really close to perfect where we don't have to do anything to modify that soil pH? So let's start there. A neutral soil pH is 7.0. And typically with our soils, we're shooting for just a little bit on the acid side. The well, ideal soil soils. pH is about 6.8 for crop production. Well, that would be for corn, soybeans, and wheat. Ideal pH is about 6.8, so that's what we're really shooting for. If we're outside that range, it's not a big deal until we get at least a half point outside that range. So in other words, 6.3 to 7.3, no big deal. I'd say you're probably close enough. When you get beyond that, then you've got to start looking at how we're going to fix it. So let's talk first about the low pH side. If you've got soil pH, below 6.3, it is impacting your yield. There's no question about it if you're raising corn, soybeans, or wheat. What you need to do is put lime out in your field. What lime will do is it will raise the pH up. This might take a period of years. It might take a fair amount of lime to get this done. It just depends on your soil type and some other factors, but it is not that difficult to do if you're diligent about it. So fix that pH if it's on the low side. Well, when we talk about the low side, it's easy because there is a soil amendment, lime, that can help raise the pH. When we look at pHs that are on the high side, over 7.3, we would consider on the high pH side. There really isn't a soil amendment that you can just put this product out on the field and all of a sudden your pH comes down. And for a lot of guys, that gets to be disappointing that, wow, well, I can't fix it quick and easy and cheap. Boy, I don't know if I wanna spend much time working on it, but don't, don't lose hope. You definitely can lower pH, it just takes a little bit of time, just like it took time for that pH to get up as high as it is. Okay, let us uh, I just wanna go back to something that Darren said, there isn't a soil amendment you can put out. That's not entirely true. There is something you can put out, it just won't be real economical for you to do it in a big commercial ag situation in most cases, and that would be elemental sulfur. If you read in gardening magazines, so for example, if you've got some little 10 by 10 plot, you can take some elemental sulfur and you can drop an 8.5 pH down to a 6.8 almost instantly if you put the proper amount of elemental sulfur out there. By the time you calculate that out on how many dollars you'd have to spend in a corn or soybean or wheat field, that'd take all your profit for about the next 20 years. So that's not going to work. You've got to look at other fixes. And the big question to ask here is why is your soil high in the first place in terms of pH? Because naturally, shouldn't soil be pretty good? Shouldn't it be around that 6.8? How did it get high in the first place? Well, in most cases, when we see soil pH is rising, on our farm, we're seeing drainage issues as being the culprit. Now, maybe it's just a spot out in the field where water sits for a couple of weeks in the spring, and then the rest of the year, it's dry, and there is no big problem. Well, you say, that doesn't sound like a big drainage issue to me. But what if we could fix that problem because what happens when you get a drainage problem is you end up with salts rising up to the soil surface and as those salts and bicarbonates build up in the upper portion of the soil where our crops are trying to grow, that pH ends up rising. We end up with less crop growth over the years and sooner or later that soil does not produce crops in that little area. In some cases it won't even produce weeds. Now, I'm not saying this could be a control <laughs> method for our weed of the week. But I'm saying that that particular area needs to get fixed, whether it's doing some surface ditching, some deep tillage, or the best thing, doing some subsurface drainage tile. You can fix those areas, and as drainage improves, pH will start to come down. So again, when you add that 
proper drainage. So let's just say, for example, you put drain tile out there. Now the water is able to get away on a regular basis and salts are very leachable in soil. So if you've got good drainage, now your salts will actually go down and move through. Your bicarbonates will get away. All those things will start to go back to normal levels. And over a long period of time, your soil pH will come down. Again, this isn't going to happen instantly, but over a long period of time, it can work. Well, you say, wait a minute now. If I'm worried about this number on my soil test and I want to adjust it, and you're talking about salts and all these things, and where that comes into play is with the soil life that's in your soil, like microbes, earthworms, bacteria, fungi, all those things are impacted by the pH of your soil. The other thing you don't end up with is very good availability of nutrients. For example, if you have phosphorus in soil at a 6.8 pH, it's usually readily available to plants in most cases. If you had a soil pH of 8.3, for example, a lot of that phosphorus will get tied up with calcium in the soil to form calcium phosphate, which is insoluble. So you get the pH out of whack, you not only have a problem with the soil life, you also have a problem with nutrient availability and your yield goes down. Just as a quick example, if you've got soil pH that is down in the, let's say, 5.0 range, you've probably given up 25% or more of your corn or soybean or wheat yield. If you've got a soil pH that is up around the 7.5 area, you've given up about 25% as well. And it even gets worse if you get up to 8.5. It gets worse if you get down to 4.5. You just have to keep in mind that the closer you're able to get that soil pH to 6.8, the better chance you have to maximize yield. To take it one step further, Brian, when we were down in Brazil, they had some soil pHs in the 4 <laughs> range. And yep. when you've got a native pH at 4, that's a big situation. Now, it seems like, oh, four to seven, that's really not that far, but it is a long ways. Yeah, and the thing is, people say, oh, Brazil has such an advantage over us in the Midwest. They can raise two crops a year or, not, or three. They have all kinds of rainfall. It's awesome down there. If you've got a 4.0 pH, the pH scale is logarithmic, so it is very acidic compared to a seven. Let's talk about the numbers quick. Well, when you go from a seven down to a six, that six is 10 times more acidic than a seven. When you go from a six down to a five, a five is 10 times more acidic than a six, which would make it 100 times more acidic than a seven. Now, when you drop all the way down to a four, <laughs> that's 1,000 times more acidic than a pH of seven. So you can see how dramatic a situation it is. And in Brazil, they really cannot raise crops on those fields that have soil pH down to four. There's only a couple of different things they can do, like putting dry land rice on those fields. So they start with dry land rice, then they move into some soybeans, and eventually they can raise some other crops in that ground too. And they have to spend a tremendous amount of money on lime, and that's why their overall fertility costs in Brazil are way higher than ours have ever been in the Midwest, and they're probably always going to be because they've got to work so hard on raising that soil pH. Well, soil pH is the most important thing on your soil test, so make sure you're testing for it and paying attention to what that pH is. If it's low, you may need to add some lime. If it's high, you may need to improve a number of things, including soil drainage. Well, soil pH is a very important thing for your land, but another important thing is controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 